Hey guys, Blazing Wrath here, and today I'm going to give my quick thoughts and analysis on the few Halo Infinite vehicles we got to try out in Flight 2. This is going to be a pretty fast-paced video as I tried to compact a lot of information in a short amount of time. With that out of the way, enjoy the video. First, my quick thoughts on the Warthog. I really like how this handles an infinite, and the wheels kind of feel like butter much like in Halo CE and Reach. However, unlike in those games, the player has much more control when ch making sharp turns. 343 also added cool destructible features uh, to the vehicles as a whole, and I'll get to those as I go over each vehicle. The side seat is nothing special, it functions like you'd expect. The turret no longer overheats. I have mixed feelings on this, because on one hand, it's nice to just hold the trigger and spray bullets all day. However, on the other hand, I'm concerned that this could make the hog too powerful. I don't think the overheat mechanic is bad. I think the best metal ground I want to see is to bring back the overheat mechanic, but increase the duration you can hold the trigger down before the turret overheats. Now the few destructible pieces that can be shot off even from loadout weapons are the tires and turret shield. When the turret shield is shot off, the gunner is much more vulnerable up front. When the tires are shot off, the Warthog receives a speed nerf and making sharp turns is a bit less responsive. Next is the Ghost. I don't have much to say on it other than I think it's cool and I think this might be the fastest Ghost in the series. It's pretty much fast even without boosting, and the player has much more control turning the Ghost while boosting. The weak points of the Ghost are the wings, and it doesn't receive anything too drastic as far as nerfs go. The speed is essentially the same, the Ghost only receives a small nerf when it comes to turning and you can't splatter as easily. The turn nerf is especially noticeable when boosting. Finally, we have the Mongoose. Again, much like the Ghost, I think this is the fastest Goose in the series. The back seat is nothing special and functions like you'd expect, but the handling of this thing is insanely responsive compared to the Warthog. When the tires are shot off, the Mongoose receives only a small speed nerf, but nothing further than that. The quick responsive handling when turning remains pretty much intact. Now, some tips on countering vehicles, and I'll be using the Warthog as my example. Any kind of grenades that you have on you is always useful. Frags, while being the weakest choice, still does some damage and knockback. Dynamo grenades don't do a ton of damage, but they're great for disabling vehicles. Spike grenades are the second best of plasma grenades, since it only took 4 spike grenades to take down a hog, versus the plasma grenade, which are the best and classic choice for dealing damage to vehicles, as it only took 3 plasma grenades to destroy a hog. Alright, moving on to grenade and rocket launchers. The rocket launcher is a no-brainer and outputs a ton of damage and knockback. The Ravager is also an obvious choice considering it's a grenade launcher. I do not recommend the ult fire though, as it doesn't do a ton of damage and the vehicles for the most part are going to be on the move anyways. Moving on to the snipers. The sniper rifle deals excellent damage. The skewer also deals massive damage and knockback. Lastly, we have the shock rifle, which is not keen on damaging vehicles, but instead disables them. Which is cool, but considering this is kind of an EMP sniper rifle, and it only takes two shots to disable a vehicle, I think this is too powerful. Maybe 3 for 3 should nerf it so it takes four shots to EMP a vehicle, rather than two. Now, for some close quarter weapons, as well as the only melee weapon we have access to. The gravity hammer is great for knocking back vehicles and dealing damage, should other players attempt to splatter you. The bulldog, unfortunately, since it doesn't do as much damage as the classic shotgun, I would only recommend using this against weak points on vehicles, such as the tires, turret shield, and the back of the door of the hog where the red gas cans hang, should a vehicle come close to you of course. The Needler, as you'd come to expect, is butt fucking useless. Do not use it against vehicles, as it is just dog water. Maybe you can try targeting the players on the vehicles, but that's about it. The Heat Wave does a pretty good job against vehicles, whether the player uses ult fire or not. Now we're finally going to move on to the loadout weapons. 
to sum up this quickly, the assault rifle that you saw earlier, the battle rifle, commando, and sidekick do not deal a ton of damage towards vehicles, as it should be. I'd really only recommend shooting the weak points on vehicles, such as the tires and wings. Now the last couple basic weapons are the pulse carbine and plaza pistol. The pulse carbine, while I still recommend targeting vehicle weak points, it's actually not bad against vehicles. It's probably the best loadout weapon that deals the most damage out of the basic weapons, surprisingly. Maybe you can try hitting the players themselves on the vehicles to weaken or maybe even kill the operator outright, considering this thing tracks. Now for the plaza pistol. I saved this gun for last because this weapon no longer EMPs vehicles. What? What the fuck? I give further details on the weapon itself in a different video, which by the way, if you want to go see my updated weapon feedback slash analysis video, I'll leave a link down below in the description. But back to the plaza pistol. Not good against vehicles and I don't recommend it. I'm now going to move on to equipment. The drop wall is actually kind of useful for defending vehicles temporarily. Not sure how useful that is, but there you go. Also, the drop wall will not protect you from getting splattered, as vehicles just go right through them. Here's some footage of me testing out the grapple shot. Basically, you hijack the closest seat wherever you grapple to. No need to press the action button, as you already, like, auto hijack once you've reached the vehicle. The threat sensor can stick to vehicle, so keep that in mind. And finally, the repulsor is great for knocking back vehicles. And that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and share this video with anyone who'd be interested. You can also watch me live on Twitch and follow me on Twitter. Links will be down in the description. And until next time, peace.